That's enough out of here! It's ridiculous! Gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, two rolls and derps alike. Welcome, welcome all. I am Mullet Mike with the Panel Gaming Network and Full Screen, bringing you Creepy Gaming. This is what you've all been waiting for. This is the final part of the season four finale of Creepy Gaming. Today, we will be talking about Easter eggs and theories from both Five Nights at Freddy's and Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Alright, no need to wait, no need to hesitate, let's just dig right into it. Let's do this! Vamanos El Mambo, turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some creepy gaming. Five Nights at Freddy's and its follow-up, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, have grown to cult-like status since the games were released. Part of this could be credited to the colorful animatronic characters, or the game's twisted tone, or perhaps the sense of humor, but personally I feel like a lot of the game's success is due to the Five Nights at Freddy's lore. These titles have been riddled with secrets, easter eggs, theories, and speculation. It appears that this seemingly one-dimensional franchise has more depth to it than some people realize. This is a list of my favorite creepy easter eggs and the most intriguing theories from the first two Five Nights at Freddy's. This animatronic has been the center of debate and speculation. Keeping the appearance of Freddy Fazbear, this supernatural golden version was featured in both Five Nights at Freddy's and its follow-up. The most popular theory seems to be that Golden Freddy is actually a hallucination seen by Mike Schmidt and other employees. There is plenty of proof to back up this claim. For example, the animatronics tend to follow the laws of physics, whereas Golden Freddy does not. What I mean by this is, typically, if an animatronic enters the office, you will be able to see them in the monitors in the back. If a door's closed, then the animatronic cannot enter. These rules do not apply to Golden Freddy. You will not see him in the monitors, and he will enter regardless whether or not the doors are open. When Golden Freddy appears in front of you, the words, It's me, can be seen flashing on the screen, sometimes resulting in the game crashing. In the first game, a Freddy Fazbear poster can be seen on Cam 2B. On occasion, the poster will change, either into an image of Golden Freddy or what appears to be Freddy tearing his own head off. Once you see the poster change, Golden Freddy will soon appear. In Five Nights 2, the haunted animatronic returns, although you won't see him until Night 6. One thing that came to my attention, and I've noticed no one is really talking about, is the fact that Golden Freddy looks completely different in the second game. You'll notice here that his ear is missing. If this game is in fact a prequel, is this the same Golden Freddy suit from the first game? On night six of Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the phone guy declares that the suit went missing. Someone used one of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Who is ultimately behind Golden Freddy? And what is his purpose? What exactly does Golden Freddy represent? <laughs> In the first game on Cam 4B, you will see the Safety Rules poster. Much like the Golden Freddy image, the poster from the East Hall corner will randomly change into one of these four newspaper articles. These four newspaper clippings depict the game's dark backstory. The news articles reference the killer as dressed as a company mascot. Many people believe this to be the missing Golden Freddy suit. Oh, 
Five Nights at Freddy's 2 featured some very intriguing Segway scenes. The Death minigames added another layer of terror to the already expanding lore. In the game Save Them, you play as Freddy walking around Fazbear Pizza. Right off the bat, you will see a sprite that resembles the notorious puppet. You can either follow the mysterious figure or freely explore the restaurant. As you walk around, you will hear these strange sounds, very reminiscent of Atari 2600 audio, as well as the visuals. Upon exploring the restaurant, you may recognize a few familiar places, as well as the puppet, dead bodies, and even Golden Freddy. All of the latter end in the same way, by the screen cutting to red static, followed by a jump scare. On rare occasions, a purple figure will appear on screen following Freddy, eventually catching up with him. This sprite has since been dubbed the Purple Man. Upon contact, instead of red, you will now get blue static, followed by the words, you can't. Because of the Purple Man's actions in the minigame, Take Cake to the Children, many players believe the figure to be the killer of the missing kids. Outside the restaurant, you will see a car pull up. Out comes the Purple Man. He approaches the crying child outside. The child turns gray as the tears remain. Many people theorize that the purple guy killed the crying child outside and that the tears are very reminiscent of the puppets. Could this child be the spirit of the disturbing marionette? In the Foxy minigame, you will leave Pirate Cove, celebrate with five kids, and then repeat. Upon the third run through, the purple man can be seen in the corner, smiling. When you approach the kids, they appear dead. Going back to the puppet for a second, in the game Give Gifts Give Life, you play as said character. At first the screen says Give Gifts, in which you must go to what appears to be four dead children. Once you come into contact with all the children, the screen will then say Give Life. Now you must give each child an animatronic mask, followed by a Golden Freddy jump scare. Many theorists believe this to be the five missing children. Four of them inhabited the original animatronics, while the fifth possibly inhabited Golden Freddy. Some feel that the puppet was the spirit of the crying child who brought life to the other murdered children by allowing them to live on in the animatronics. While being a strong theory, I have one of my own. Perhaps the puppet was the killer, or at least the killer in disguise. The newspaper article says that the killer was dressed as a company mascot. It never says anything about Golden Freddy. I think most people just assume that it is. Phone Guy says that someone took a yellow suit, but that could very well be unrelated to this particular act. Just from the minigame Take Cake to the Children, we learn that the five missing kids wasn't an isolated incident. It appears that the killer has murdered many more than just the reported five. The article also states that the animatronics began to smell, indicating that the killer could have possibly stuffed their dead bodies into the animatronics, or at least the animatronic costumes. Could this be the killer living out those very deeds? One of the more argued theories out there is who exactly the killer is. Some say Mike Schmidt was the killer. Some players say that it was the phone guy, while yet others feel that it is some character not yet featured. Let's look at some of the arguments. Before the second game's release, many people believe that you were really the killer all along. This might explain why you were haunted by animatronics of the missing children, as well as the hallucinations of Golden Freddy, and let's not forget his trademark saying, it's me possibly referring to the fact that you are indeed the killer. When the second game came out and players had a chance to play the death mini games, the theory sprung up that the phone guy was the killer. All right, follow me on this one. Let's just say that the purple man really does signify the killer. Many theorists believe that because of this sprite that the phone guy was indeed the murderer. The purple man can be seen with either some type of weapon or what many gamers believe to be a phone. Plus, the badge that he wears may be indication that he is, in fact, an employee of Fazbear Entertainment. Phone Guy's calls also feature many subtle clues to further prove this theory, such as Foxy being his favorite. The Purple Man can be seen smiling in the Foxy minigame. <laughs> Uh, 
players were surprised when they noticed this weird little guy staring back at them. Some players believe that the cupcake is how the animatronics can see you, almost like their own surveillance device. Toy Chica can also be seen carrying a similar cupcake in Five Nights at Freddy's too. What's its purpose? Many gamers, myself included, feel that it appears too random not to have some sort of meaning, important or not. Does this creepy cupcake serve a deeper purpose? Or are we just looking into this one too much? The Bite of 87 was an unfortunate event that happened in the game's backstory and was first alluded to in the original Five Nights at Freddy's. According to the story, one of the animatronics actually bit off a customer's frontal lobe. But which animatronic? One of the more popular theories is that Foxy is the culprit seeing as his jaw is believed to be broken. Upon further inspection, you may notice that when Foxy first enters the room, his jaw is, in fact, closed. Other suspects include that of Freddy Fazbear himself, as well as the Mangle, considering how she attacks from above. The incident damaged the restaurant's public perception. The animatronics now had to roam around freely at night since they weren't allowed to during the day, leaving every employee of Fazbear Entertainment on edge. Either way, the infamous bite has been a central plot point getting a lot of attention. I personally feel like we have yet to hear the full story of the bite of 87. Perhaps more information will come to light in a future installment. These were just a few of the main Five Nights at Freddy's theories that have currently been spread around, and I feel like this is merely the tip of the proverbial iceberg. New scenarios and possibilities have been springing up on a daily basis. Anytime a game's lore exceeds the game itself and inspires others, then it officially surpasses the media in which it was released. I have and will continue to give the series high praise. Some may call the games overrated, but I say any title that generates the buzz like these games have is obviously doing something right. Before I wrap up, allow me to give you the greatest Five Nights at Freddy's theory of them all. Scott Cawthon developed an original title in hopes that it would catch on with the gaming community. Once seeing the success of the first game and realizing how much players have been reading into it, then he decided to go all out with Five Nights 2. Rather than just throwing random objects and dates out there, it seems Scott gave us enough clues without having to spell everything out. And that's just my personal theory. The Five Nights at Freddy series gives players plenty of room to speculate and theorize. Between the disturbing kid-orientated animatronics, the panic one feels while playing the game, as well as the countless theories Five Nights at Freddy's will forever go down in creepy gaming history. I guess that does it for season four of Creepy Gaming. It's been a fun ride, it's been an interesting year to say the least. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you for watching and supporting. It's very much appreciated. Well, I don't guess I really got much more to say. Enjoy your time with your friends and family. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to thank all my staff members. Wouldn't have been able to do it this season without you guys. But other than that, I gotta go get a belt back. So I'll see y'all next season. Keep Peace. Thank you.